నమస్తే అండ్ వెల్కమ్ టు ఇండియన్ లిటరీ క్లాసిక్స్ కుప్పాలి వెంకటప్ప పుట్టప్ప పాపులర్లీ నోన్ బై హిస్ పెన్ నేమ్ కూవెంపు వాస్ కన్నడాస్ ఫస్ట్ జ్ఞానపీఠ వాడి హిస్ వర్క్ శ్రీ రామాయణ దర్శనం రిటర్న్ ఇన్ నైన్టీన్ ఫార్టీ నైన్ డెమాన్స్ట్రేటెడ్ హిస్ కమాండ్ ఓవర్ వర్స్ అండ్ మార్క్ ద బిగినింగ్ ఆఫ్ కన్నడ ఎపిక్ పోయిట్రీ కువెంపు స్టార్టెడ్ హిస్ లిటరీ జర్నీ విత్ ద కలెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ పోయమ్స్ కాల్డ్ ద బిగినర్స్ మ్యూస్ but later switched to kannada his native language he greatly influenced kannada as a language medium in schools and founded the kannada adhyayana samaste which is the institute of kannada studies in the mysore university in this episode of indian literary classics we are going to talk about one of kuempu's most famous work kannuru hegaditi or the proprietress of kannuru written in 1936 this story talks about a woman who after her husband's death get into sporadic acts of defiance and uses her position of authority eventually her acts consume herself Chandraya Gowda is a man of wealth and affluence in Kannuru. His brother Subbaya Gowda had been the head of the family and after his death Chandraya takes his place. Subbaya's wife Nagamma always believed that Chandraya had used some black magic to kill him whereas in reality he had actually died due to high fever. Chandraya's behavior of indifference towards Nagamma made people believe her story. Subbaya and Nagamma's son Huvaya knew all of this but he was primarily interested in educating himself moreover his closeness to Chandraya's son Ramaya made him not react to anything emotionally that his mother would keep coming and telling him Chandraya actually wanted to commit suicide when his first wife and Ramaya's mother dies unexpectedly however he ends up marrying again Unfortunately his second wife also dies due to childbirth complications and people get surprised when Chandraya feels a need to marry yet again within a year the cultured families were not too keen to get their daughters married off to Chandraya due to his middle age without any care Chandraya seeks a bride from another village he marries Subbamma a young girl who initially thought that her alliance was being sought for Huvaya as she harbored a secret wish to marry him after seeing him in a wedding she gets surprised when she realizes that chandraya had not come for huvaya's alliance but for his own having grown up in a very poor household subamma knew she would have ended up marrying a farmer and worked hard to earn a living she is happy at the thought that it is a blessing in disguise that she would be the wife of someone like chandra gowda and become the owner of the prestigious Kannuru Heights household. Marrying a middle-aged widower would have shattered the heart of any young girl, but Subama had no such presumptions. Subama had no formal education and definitely had no generosity, pleasant manners or restraint of any sorts. She had a lot of vanity, haughtiness and selfishness that had remained dormant over the years and it raised its head as soon as she became the mistress of the large household she started to relentlessly exercise her authority over everybody at all locations although chandraya himself was authoritative by nature he lets her get away with her uncivilized behavior and also showered gifts on her as he was concerned that her mind might stray given that she is very young One such day as Chandraya is busy with some visitors he hears a lot of fighting coming from the kitchen he realizes that Subama is the root cause to all the commotion and feels really embarrassed in front of all the visitors in the house he suddenly remembers that neither of his two late wives had anything like that to bring him disrespect in front of outsiders he finally loses his cool when subama serves him burnt food and he takes out all his anger on her let's get introduced to some other characters in the story sita 
was the daughter of Chandraya's friend and grew up with Ramaya and Huvaya. She was more closer to Huvaya, although he was five to six years older than her. There was an excitement in her mind as she heard that both the brothers are coming back to the village for college vacations. She started remembering all the fun moments she has had with Huvaya, including their marriage play when they were kids. Sita's reverie is broken when she hears a commotion outside. She steps out to see that Ramaya and another person is helping Huvaya get down from the cart as she seems to be in great pain. She learns that the bullocks pulling the cart broke into a run and crashed into a tree. Sita's father urges Huvaya and Ramaya to stay back a couple of days before proceeding to Kannuru. Sita makes it her agenda to take care of Huvaya and ensures that he recovers as quickly as possible. Their romance blossoms again. Ramaya leaves Huvaya to recover in Sita's house and heads to Kannuru. At night, during dinner, he notices a new person serving food and by her mannerisms, he concludes that she knows her way around the house. A dreadful thought comes into his head that his father might have married again, but he dismisses it. The following morning, he inquires about this person and learns that she is indeed his stepmother. Ramaya is very hurt and upset that his father has married again and this time to a girl who is younger than himself, but he chooses not to question Chandraya. Chandraya in the meantime continues to be agitated with Subama for one reason or the other. He is surprised to see a change in Subama's behavior after the arrival of Ramaya and Huvaya. Her fights with Nagamma, Huvaya's mother, had stopped and in general, Subama was treating everyone very nicely. In reality, Subama actually becomes very ashamed of her uncivilized behavior, especially when she sees how dignified Ramaya and Huvaya are. She decides to change for the better. Huvaya is very fond of reading and spends a lot of time reading the Bhagavad Gita. He is also a very practical person in his approach and often argues about baseless religious practices. This irks Venkappaya, the family priest, as being a Shudra, Huvaya seems to know a lot more about the scriptures than he does as a Brahmana. Huvaya also makes sure that the laborers who are working on the fields are compensated properly. In this process, he rubs a few people the wrong way, including the overseer of the estate, Rangappa Shetty. Chandraya knows that Subama is young and comes from a poor family and begins to suspect that she might have some desire for Huvaya. The overseer feels that it is the right opportunity to have his revenge on Huvaya and starts poisoning Chandraya's ears. Chandraya was never fond of Huvaya and this aggravates him further. Chandraya decides that he will divide the property and throw Huvaya and Nagamma out of the house. One evening, when Huvaya was reading a story to Ramaya and others in the house, a drunk Chandraya walks in and says, I cannot afford your studies anymore. To this, Huvaya responds that he has a scholarship and can manage on his own. Ramaya also offers to stay back home and help Chandraya in the fields, but pleads to his father that he should continue to have Huvaya study. Chandraya angrily retorts and says, I cannot get along with your mother Nagamma anymore, so I am going to divide the property. Take your share and leave this place. Ramaya is shocked and starts crying. Ramaya feels that it must be the overseer's doing. Chandraya calls in a few influential people in and around the village and presents all the record related to the property. Very cleverly, he keeps the fertile lands to himself and gives a portion of the house and some barren lands to Huvaya. Nagamma protests, but Huvaya consoles her by saying that Chandraya has paid for his education and has agreed 
not to have them repay the loan for the same. Chandraya goes further to partition his side of the house and makes a big deal if someone from his house even talks to Huvaya or Nagamma. He comes down heavily on Subama if she by chance speak to either Huvaya or Nagamma and continues to suspect and abuse her and he even goes to the extent of accusing her of poisoning him so that she can live with Huvaya. Nagamma and Huvaya feel really bad for Subama and they feel that it is time to move out of their portion of the house to another place. Even then, Chandraya's wrath on Subama continues to increase and one such day, she just runs away from the house as he tries to kill her. Chandraya, although happy that Huvaya and Nagamma have moved out, he still continues to find ways to humiliate them. He proposes to Sita's parents that they get her married to Ramaya. He poisons Ramaya's mind against Huvaya with the help from the priest. Chandraya also bribes the priest to convince Sita's parents that Sita's horoscope does not match with Huvaya, but it is a perfect match with Ramaya. In their eagerness to get Sita married to Kannuru household, Sita's parents consent. Chandraya then asks the priest to make sure that the wedding happens at all cost. Although both Sita and Huvaya are very disturbed by this, the preparations for the wedding go on in full swing. As the wedding ceremony takes place, Ramaya is in a state of confusion and fear. He is not sure if he is doing the right thing. He misses Huvaya and is very disturbed by the fact that he distanced himself from his brother, philosopher and guide. As the auspicious time for tying the sacred thread approaches, a fire breaks out in Sita's house and everyone's attention is taken by that. As Ramaya stands confused, Chandraya urges the priest to not get distracted and finish the rituals. As Ramaya continues to stand in confusion, the priest just takes the sacred thread from his hand and ties it around Sita's neck. Sita is not happy being Ramaya's bride and does not want to let go of her mother's side who had come to drop her in Kannuru. Her mother and brother slip out while she is sleeping and when she realizes, she creates a huge commotion in the house. The priest is called and he announces that she is possessed with a spirit. He advises to Chandraya that if he brands her with a hot rod, the spirit might leave her. Chandraya and the priest hold her down forcibly and brand her hand with red hot iron. Ramaya is furious and he intervenes and asks her to be taken away. Similar incident continues and Sita is forced to leave Kanuru to her mother's house. Ramaya is distraught at the turn of events and in a rage accuses Chandraya of ruining him, his relationship with Huvaya, his married life and even bringing destruction to the Kanuru household due to his ego and stubbornness. Chandraya gets very angry, but he knows that every word his son has spoken is very true. Chandraya becomes very disturbed after Ramaya's outrage and this starts to tell on his health. He stays in the bed most of the time and although he has become very weak physically, the arrogance had not left him. He would shout at anyone who would come inside the room. Subama gets to know that he is unwell and comes back to Kannuru to see him. Chandraya breaks down on seeing Subama and doesn't let go of her. His condition worsens by the day. Huvaya hears about Chandraya's illness and decides to pay him a visit. Subama almost does not recognize Huvaya. He had become thin, unshaven and looked very lost. The turn of events at Kannuru and the loss of his mother Nagamma had totally demoralized him. He comes into Chandraya's room and calls him. Chandraya, who had not been speaking to anyone, slowly looks at Huvaya and breaks down. He takes Huvaya's hand and places it in his forehead as if asking for his forgiveness. Huvaya cries and unable to see his uncle's condition, leaves immediately. A few days later, Chandraya passes away. 
with ramaiya totally lost in his own world subamma decides that she should step up and take over the responsibility of the kannuru estate she starts actively participating in all the work and manages everything efficiently with the help of the overseer over time she and the overseer get very close to each other being a young woman her desires are kindled the overseer on the other hand had an eye on subamma for a while and sees this as an opportunity to satisfy his lust in a moment of weakness subamma lowers her guard time passes on and to subamma's shock she discovers that she is pregnant with the overseer's child this troubles her a lot as she worries about the reputation of the kannuru household and her foolishness she has no one to turn to but the overseer who has already made grand plans to decamp with the money and jewels of subamma and the kannuru household he mentions to her that he can arrange for a medicine that will abort the child but it will be costly subamma trusts him as she has no other option and gives him all her jewelry and money the overseer gets her a medicine and overnight disappears from kannuru ramaiya somehow comes to know of this and in his mental state he is unable to handle the whole situation he feels that he has had enough of his life and decides to end it he shuts himself in his room and drinks a full bottle of poison and goes to sleep never to get up again subama in the meantime tries the medicine that the overseer had given her the medicine being very strong not only kills her fetus but her also the servant of the house sends for hubaya who rushes in to see the lifeless body of subama he runs up to wake his brother and breaks open the door when he doesn't get any response he is totally shattered when he sees his most dearest brother lying dead he is completely disillusioned and wanders around meaninglessly sita and a few others pacify him and he learns that sita was never married to ramaya since it was the priest who had tied the sacred thread on chandraya's instructions he slowly comes to terms and with the blessing of the elders mary sita huvaya brings about a lot of changes to kannuru over several years he makes sure that everyone is treated fairly and works hard in abolishing religious superstitions and sentiments he restores kannuru to its old glory with sita by his side Kuempu's writing is so powerful that it actually transport you back into Indian villages during the pre-independence era. The naiveness, religious superstition and sentiments, the caste system, lack of any women empowerment etc comes to life in the story and you feel being part of the story as one of its characters. The famous writer and playwright Girish Karnad chose this story for his Kannada movie in 1999. by the same name he not only directed this film but also played the important role of chandraya doing full justice to the character this is the only instance in indian film industry where one nyanpit awardi has made a movie of a story of another nyanpit awardi the movie went on to win the national award for the best kannada language feature film during the 47th awards in 1999 We hope you like this story. I request you all to please share your comments below so that it will help us improve our content and presentation. Also, if you have a story in your native language that you would like everyone to know, please get in touch with us. Our contact details are in the section below. Namaste and Jai Hind.